If you're looking for the easiest way to solo Flawless the new Spire of the Watcher dungeon on Avoid Hunter, then you came to the right place. If Titan or Warlock are more your speed, I'll have those linked in the description. The basic idea behind this guide is I'm going to walk you through each and every encounter and give you every single tip and every piece of advice, both for generally solo Flawlessing dungeons and for solo Flawlessing this specific dungeon in this video. I'm going to tell you where to stand, where to shoot, what weapons to use, what your loadout should be, every single thing you could possibly ever need to know. So starting with the loadout, like I said, we are on Void Hunter. I'm recommending Omnioculus for this one. You can go to your Falcons if you want to, if you're more comfortable with that. But Omnioculus is better for survivability, in my opinion. For stats, you want to max out mobility and resilience. Some of our mods are going to help with that. We'll talk about those in a bit. With your third prioritization being discipline. As for our abilities, Gambler's Dodge, of course, to get our Smoke Grenade back on Dodge. Vortex Grenade, because I think it's the best Void Grenade. Mobius Quiver because it's really strong for damage for the bosses and because Deadfall doesn't work too well because the bosses like to move around a lot and it doesn't track them or follow them. For our aspects, we have Trapper's Ambush so we can do our Quick Fall for two extra seconds of invisibility and of course we can go invisible with our melee ability. Vanishing Step so that our dodge also makes us invisible. Echo of Obscurity for finishers granting invisibility. Echo of Persistence for a bonus two seconds on all of our invisibility effects. And Echo of Remnant so that our Void Grenade lasts a little bit longer. For weapons, we'll talk about a little bit more as we go to each encounter. But for the mods, um, I'm going Reaping Wellmaker so that every single time we get a kill after we dodge, we create a Void Elemental Well. I'm also going Bountiful Wells so that instead of creating one Elemental Well, we always make two. I then have Well of Utilities so that picking up an Elemental Well gives us increased class ability refund, which will allow us to dodge more often, get more smoke grenades, go invisible from our dodge. And then, of course, Powerful Friends along with an Arc Resist to proc the 20 mobility aspect of Powerful Friends. It's going to help us get maxed out on both of these stats right here. Other than that, we've got, you know, your typical... Scavenger mods for linear fusion, since that is what I'm going to be primarily recommending for the first boss. And then um, some seasonal mods like energy diffusion substrate for a little extra damage resistance. And then, of course, solo operative to utility kickstarts for even more dodging. Now, if you're not high enough in the season pass to get solo operative yet, you can totally still solo flaws this dungeon. It's just going to take you more DPS phases on the boss encounters. So if you want to make your run a little bit easier on yourself i would wait until you unlock solo operative until you get enough xp um but it is by no means necessary same thing with my power level i'm doing this at 1597 you don't have to be that high um but obviously the higher you are the easier it's going to make it now the key thing for the first encounter is just completely ignoring every single ad since you're on void hunter you can obviously just go invis and you pretty much don't have to worry about the existence of any of them. Instead, you just want to focus entirely on getting all of the node chains, which pay close attention to what I'm doing on screen right now, because I'm going to show you the best route to take um, to easily get all of them. So we're going to start with this outside right one. And I highly recommend against completing any of them, because completing a series of arc nodes will spawn a bunch of supplicants and obviously we don't really want to deal with supplicants at all um if we don't have to so just gonna drop down hit that real quick that one goes to here that one goes there and then this one comes over here probably played a little reckless with my invisibility there but obviously ended up being fine then we're gonna hop up to the left side the back of the room hit that that one goes there then we hop down then we're gonna hit this one and we go there. Actually, it's this one first, but since I shot that, it stays online for a little bit. That's why it's still connected them, but it is that one first. It's that one and then that one, but obviously still worked out. So now we're going to hit our dodge. We only have one left, and it's this inside left side one. So we're just going straight through this tunnel, and getting these rotations down is really, really great because it means you're going to be getting through this intro section in about like two minutes. Um, which is nice because, you know, the reality of the situation when it comes to solo policy dungeons is, you know, you're going to have a wipe or two. It's just the way it's going to be. So after we have all those chains connected, we can just come to the middle and hit all four and then ta-da, it's completely done. Um, your loadout doesn't really matter for this section at all because obviously, as you saw, it's just really using my, um, you, you know, you're not really killing any enemies. For this part, make sure... You're kind of bunny hopping your way down. 
<coughs> excuse me, just getting over being a little sick, have the flu, uh, had the flu and whatnot. But just bunny hopping your way down, right as you land. Um, otherwise, you're gonna get a little too much momentum. See, like even right there, went a little faster than I would have liked to, but still safe. Um, but I mean, if if you wipe on that ramp, it's it's gonna be annoying. Um, but you only spent two minutes in that intro encounter if you're using that strategy and running those exact routes. So um, not particularly the, the worst thing in the world. So while I'm traversing this terrain to the next encounter, which again, you don't have to worry about any enemies whatsoever, I recommend having a sword on um, as you load into the dungeon. Cause like I said, um, your loadout for that first encounter really doesn't matter at all. And a sword can really be nice for these jumping puzzle sections um, because if you mess up a jump, a sword can kind of get you out of trouble um, a little better than not having one can. If you know how to shatter skate, you can go straight from here to the exit right there. Um, I'm not going to display that strategy because I know a lot of people don't really know how to do that. So I want to make this guide as accessible as possible. So not really going to display any like expert level movement tech or whatever you want to call it. Instead, we're just going to kind of keep using our invisibility cooldown so that we can basically ignore every single enemy. I'm going to use my sword to get across to here, um, but you certainly don't have to if you don't have an eager red sword. You can still very easily make that jump with triple jump on Hunter, um, so no worries. If you want to be even safer too, um, you can bring a pair of stompies with you. Um, you would, of course, lose out on your extra smoke grenade, um, so you'd have to be a bit more disciplined with your invisibility cooldowns, but it'll make the jumping itself a little bit easier if you'd like. Um, it's completely doable without stompies, so you, you know, don't feel like you have to bring them and sacrifice that, you know, extra smoke charge with Omnioculus, but up to you. But yeah, this is pretty easy to get through. Um, you know, you're not, not really having to fight anything and you know, you're pretty safe. So right here is probably the time I will switch to my Cataclysmic Linear Fusion Rifle. You can keep the sword on if you want to for this next section, if you're worried about potentially falling off. Um, the way that I'm going to show you to do this section pretty much makes it so that you're never in a position where you're um, floating in the air in a location where you can fall off. So should be pretty fine. Um, this next section, we're going to play very similar to how we played the first one, where our primary focus is just going to be the nodes. We're just going to be chaining our invisibility, um, you know, using our dive into our dodge, dive, dodge, repeat, etc., etc. Um, and we don't really have to focus on the enemies whatsoever. If we're getting low on cooldowns and there's a big swarm of them, then obviously we can clear those out and keep ourselves safe. But and the main focus is going to be on the nodes and just kind of paying attention to the routes that I run. So right when we pop up, we're going to run around the corner here because there's going to be a Minotaur sitting for us. Try and hit him with the Wither Horde, maybe. Nope. Not going to happen, but that's okay. And as you can see, I have double special on. This isn't really a dungeon that you have to run a primary weapon for in, you know, most situations. I know double special can seem like a scary thing to run. Like, it's only for, like, really high-level sweat players that are always running, like, special finishers and coordinating with, like, Aeons and stuff like that. Um, but double special can actually have a lot of really nice benefits that come with it. The main one being that you actually get significantly increased heavy ammo drops when you get a kill while your special weapon is out if you're running double special, which can be really, really huge for the boss encounters, which will honestly stretch a pretty long duration. I almost died there because I was completely focused on talking. I apologize. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit this Minotaur real quick. I think I did not need to run back over here. I messed up my route a little bit, but you know, do as I say, not as I do. Um, so we're going to get that buff refresh real quick. Here's the node that we had to hit. Got some enemies around us, so I'm just going to hit a quick dive just for safety. And then, of course, our next node, if we come over here to the right, we'll be able to see it right up on the wall. And then the next one, venture on over here. Should be right up there. And then right below us. And then we're done with this one. I was a little scuffed, but, you know, perfectly fine. But as I was saying about double special, um, 
if you're holding a special weapon while you get kills, it doesn't even necessarily have to be kills with the weapon um, itself, you have a higher chance of getting heavy bricks. And if you're holding a heavy weapon while you're running double special, you have a higher chance of getting special bricks. So um, it just works out really nice in the ammo department, um, especially for those boss encounters. And there's not really a section that you ever need a primary weapon because uh, with special trace rifles, they kind of act like primary weapons, honestly, in the sense um, that, you know, they just, they have a ton of ammo. Um, they're honestly like just juiced up versions of primary weapons. They do um, hold similar amounts of ammo or, or did before, um, before primary weapons went into the ammo and um, they do just way more damage. So kind of nice. So grab that one up top, come around here, grab that one, grab that one under the roof. And then, of course, we're done with this floor as well. <clears throat> Once you get these routes down um, in the first encounter and in this encounter, you're, I mean, you're you're to the first boss in your solo flawless run in, like, just a few, like, you know, eight to ten minutes. It's, it's actually crazy fast. So that's a lot of enemies right there, so I'm going to go ahead and hit an invis cooldown real quick. Go ahead and dodge. And then um, here, actually... there and then my arctrician is just barely running i think i missed one actually and i need a new arctrician buff of course i did miss one that's where the wires cross so i need to go grab a new arctrician buff real quick find a minotaur friend and then what i can do is since i've reached this location that's the other starting point so i can actually hit that one and as i'm coming around here i can connect this sequence a little bit too i'm gonna go ahead and hit that one because they uh they kind of cross each other so it'll it'll make my route a little bit faster when i have to kind of double back and do my second loop. I just ran out of my attrition bump a little too early. See? And then I... Since I kind of pre-did and double backed, backtracked a little bit, um, it made it so that I didn't have to do, like, another loop around to get that second... Uh, second wiring. Because one of the starting positions on that third floor is going to be right in front of you as you come out of the elevator, and then the other one is going to be on the, you know, polar opposite side. Okay. Now, for this encounter, your weapon loadout actually matters, of course. I'm sticking with the one that I currently have equipped. I've got Wither Horde. I've got my Retraced Path. Um, I love Trace Rifles for this because they are incredible at taking out all of the eyes on the boss. And taking out those eyes as quickly as possible is going to make your DPS phase as, you know, as, as long as it can be. Um, then in my heavy slot, I've got a linear fusion rifle with boss spec. Cataclysmic with fourth times the charm and bait and switch is the best possible option you can have. But I get that not everyone raids. If you don't have one like this, any linear fusion rifle with boss DPS oriented perks will do. Four times the charm, triple tap, vorpal weapon, frenzy, anything like that can be awesome. Just make sure you have a boss spec on it. This retrace path, um, not going to be used for too much damage, but I'll throw on boss spec on it, because why not? And then, of course, if you have access to it, this is where you also want to throw on weakened clear, because um, your wither horde is, of course, going to be able to, de uh, to debuff the boss, and then it's going to give you a little bit of extra damage on the boss. Unfortunately, it takes my mobility down to nine. That's fine. That's just something we're going to have to live with. But this encounter is very similar to the previous two in the sense that you're going to be ignoring a lot of the ads. And you'll notice that because, um, because a lot of your time spent is going to be under these catwalks shooting the nodes, the ads aren't really even going to have a shot on you anyway. So puts you in a really, really solid position to, you know, once again, run double special because you're not really wasting too much ammo. Um, and of course, like I said, double special is huge for sections like this because it encourages more heavy drops. So we're going to get our attrition, and then I'm going to hit all four in the middle. 
because then I never have to go back up on that central platform for the rest of this phase. Now, most people are going to have like a comfort side that they like. This one is mine. I recommend hitting every single node except for one on your comfort side and starting with that one in terms of connecting all the nodes and leaving the last one intentionally so that you can come back around and hit it um, as you're ready to go for DPS phase. And the reason I recommend doing that is because the one type of ad that you actually do want to clear out is the harpies. The harpies will make your life really, really, really troublesome um, when it comes to DPSing the boss because they're kind of like the laser beam sniper harpies and they'll be able to hit you from literally anywhere on the map. Um, so they hurt a great deal and it can put you, put you in a lot of danger when it comes to DPSing the boss because the harpy damage in conjunction with the boss's like burst knockback attack um, will, will really rough you up. So um, the heart, uh, leaving one until the very end allows you to then kind of come over here not have to worry about any of the fuel rods at all and it'll let you clear out all of the harpies that are going to be you know kind of right next to you so that you don't have to worry about them at all whatsoever for dps took a little bit too much fire there probably a little greedy but worked out okay still have my arctrician buff and now i can just come on over here hit this and i know that i'm harpy free except for that one over there I don't think one is going to be too much of an issue. So now here for boss DPS, I just get to use my trace rifle and it's going to make getting the eyes really, really easy. And then boom, we're on DPS right there. And then for DPS, of course, I want you to really focus on walking on the side of the catwalk. And we're going to get a little close, but then we're going to start to back up. Because we don't want to take too much damage from, like, the Minotaurs and all the adds and stuff like that. We don't want to get too weak um, as we're coming in. Because the boss's knockback is, of course, going to damage us pretty significantly. Now, as we go into the next phase, we're going to do the same thing that we did. But we're going to be a little bit more observant of ammo that's dropping on the ground. Because even though we're not killing a ton of enemies, we are still killing some enemies. And the fact that we're using double special, like I said previously, is going to give us a ton of heavy. We li literally have two heavy bricks right there. Um, one of the biggest issues of solo flawless in this dungeon is that uh, ammo efficiency is really rough. Because the bosses have really, really, really big HP bars compared to previous solo flawless dungeons. Um, so being able to have a big supply of heavy ammo, um, constantly dropping is going to make your runs of this a lot more smoother, um, a lot more smoother, a lot more smooth. Um, apparently I need to go back to school. Um, you're, you're, you're going to be able to have very reliable, you know, three to five phases of this, depending on how good your damage is. Um, like me in particular, despite being someone who plays the game a lot, um, you know, like to think I'm pretty decent at the game. Um, you know, I, d I don't do a perfect DPS phase every time. And so if if I'm not getting any ammo drops, um, it means that, you know, those third, fourth, fifth DPS phases um, are going to, you know, basically be all special and theoretically primary ammo if I was using primary. So, um, you know, having, having those increased heavy ammo drops is just really, really nice. Um, now I'm out of special ammo, which is of course problematic, but what I can do is I can drop a Wither Horde on the ground and then switch to my heavy ammo. And because my heavy weapon is out when the enemies die, it encourages increased chances of special ammo drops. Same thing if my grit, if, you know, if my heavy weapon is out while... I get kills with like abilities and stuff like that it's going to encourage more special ammo drops which is really really nice same thing if i like kill enemies with finishers and stuff like that there's another special break boom i'm at 179 ammo with my linear and now i'm gonna go ahead and try and kill some of these guys because i want to save a little bit 
with my trace rifle ammo for the eyeballs. But yeah, I'm feeling pretty good right there. Go ahead and wither hoard that guy, pull up my heavy, so I hopefully get a special brick. Um, I didn't, but that's okay. But I do need that Arctrician buff so I can start at the next DPS phase. Get this a quick reload. I've got a Harpy up, which is kind of annoying. I'll just kill him real quick. Completely missed my wither word. Okay, go invis real quick, because I don't really like how much damage I'm getting from the harpies. So right there I didn't do the best job of clearing out the harpies, that's why my damage wasn't able to be as good. But you know, you'll have bad damage phases, just it's just kind of the way solo flawless in dungeons goes. So right here, very, very low on special ammo, so I'm gonna try to make a very conscious effort to have my heavy ammo out or have my heavy weapon out while I'm killing things. I can just kill things with my melee too. Kill things with my melee, kill things with my grenade. As I run around and like kind of try to force special ammo drops. And I can pull out my wither horn and do a quick shot too. I'll still get special ammo. Special break right there. Can even do a finisher on him. Can do a melee into a finisher um, with our Echo of Obscurity. It's gonna, you know, keep us invisible. Just helps us get our ammo topped off. It's really nice. Then we can start our chain again, and you can pretty much do that whenever you get low on ammo. The number one thing I want to emphasize is you are not in any sort of rush here when it comes to doing DPS and killing the boss and stuff like that. You can take absolutely as much time as you want. There is quite literally no time-based mechanic here. Um, the number one thing that people do, I think, that will mess up solo flawless dungeon runs is try to rush themselves so i don't necessarily have to go back you know and, and stay to my route oh no that's so sad um i don't have to stay uh you know doing doing my route the same exact way i've been doing it I, you know i can take a little break and clear out clear out some ads and try and get a little bit of extra ammo and whatnot there's nothing wrong with that um, it's not not gonna increase my chances of a wipe or anything. So always good to keep stuff like that in mind. The key thing with solo flawless dungeons is you know, making sure that you prioritize safety above all else. And if part of safety is, you know, trying to take a little bit of more time in a phase because you want some extra ammo for DPS, then you know, nothing wrong with that. So we'll pick back up where we left off. I have seven seconds left on my Artrician, but of course I get plus five seconds every time I shoot a node. So I'll be able to get my time back up pretty significantly. And then I am pretty decent on uh, Trace Rifle Ammo, so actually going to make an effort to kill a couple of Harpies so that they're not messing with me during damage so I can get a really, really solid DPS phase. And a big thing that's really, really important to always remember playing Hunter is that you can use finishers uh, as invisibility. So, Unfortunately, I lost my Artrician buff while I was clearing out all those Harpies, so I have to run back over here to this Minotaur and get it back. With a word missed, sadly. I'm gonna try and pull my heavy weapon out while I kill him, so I hopefully get a special brick, and boom, there's a special brick. 102 ammo to my trace rifle. That's definitely gonna feel nice. Try and do the same thing here. 
Get kind of body blocking. Oops. And then here's ZPS, and there's quite literally zero harpies up, which is really, really solid. I'm going to try and drop a Wither Horde right there, too, for the goblins that are walking down the bridge. So that they're not bugging me during DPS. I'd recommend hip firing with the Trace Rifle as well. It seems like hip firing is just going to be a... Oops. A better option. Prime proc bait and switch again. So, pretty decent DPS there. So, uh, this is pretty much... I think I've taught literally every single thing that you could possibly need to know for this particular encounter. I've taught you how to prioritize different types of ammo drops. I've taught you how to play the fight. I've taught you the routes that you should take. I've ta taught you the best angles to hit all the arc nodes from. I've taught you, you know, how ideally you want to do DPS. So I'm not going to show you the rest of this encounter. I'm just going to skip ahead to the next one. Okay, so after you kill the Harpy, of course, back to the middle where we're going to work our way down the spire to the center. Just be very careful with these jumps. Take your time. There's absolutely no rush. Um... If you rush that's what's gonna get you killed so just take it nice and slow especially on the bigger jumps or the bigger jumps are actually the only ones that matter i suppose right go ahead and kind of proc all of their fire generation state things here you could switch to a <coughs> excuse me um a machine gun if you wanted to, um, or you could even switch to the primary weapons, to be honest. I, I might do that, just because not really a point in being on double special here. Ammo is not something that matters to particularly much in that section. Go ahead and get the attrition buff. I don't really worry about killing all the adds, because um, you can just jump right through them. Normally, I would say do whatever keeps you as safe as humanly possible, but those adds are basically a non-issue. For these sections, I am 99% sure that the slow fan blades cannot kill you. It's only the fast moving ones like this and the one at the bottom that can. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't care about hitting them. I would still try to avoid hitting them. So kind of, you know, timing it right and dropping down, landing right on top of these platforms like this. Um, just that, you know, you're, you're not going to automatically die if you do get hit by one of those slow fan blades. Just be ready to, if you do get hit, be ready to jump so that you can readjust your position and land on something um, so that you don't fall into the fast fan blade, obviously. So right down here, just out of the next section. Love Wither Horde for stuff like this because basically instantly kill a huge group of enemies, spawn kill them. Probably didn't need to Wither Horde and Grenade on top of the same pack of ads, but live in there. So here comes the Minotaur. I think the Minotaur spawns over there, if I recall correctly. Nope, I am wrong. Ah! 180 degrees. So go ahead and tag him up. You're probably best killing all of the hobgoblins in this section. I don't think you need to kill all the enemies down below, but killing all the hobgoblins so you can um, be uninhibited while you're shooting all of the, uh, whatever you call them, the arc nodes. I always forget the name of them. Probably a good idea. These are these are pretty easy. One on the ceiling, one right there, and then one right above the door. And straight back down. Careful with our jumps into the tunnel, and then once again, slow moving fan blades should not be able to kill you. Still try to avoid them. I like to start walking right when they line up with my character model. Here, there's no platform to land on, so I aim for these black bars right there. So right when it lines up with my character, boom, that's when I start walking. Now I did get hit, but like I said, getting hit doesn't really matter. Just be ready to jump so that you can readjust your position so that you don't get hit that, uh, get hit by that fast fan blade. So, right back down. Here's a, a large jump. There's electricity on the side of the walls here. I don't know if it can actually kill you, um, but I don't, you know, 
now is not really the time for experimentation. So just assume that it can kill you and, you know, line up your jump nice and proper just to be safe. Here you have a lot of fanatics that uh, you'll be on the ground with, so keep in mind there. Then we want to try and take out this Hydro as soon as possible, because he definitely hurts a lot. Go ahead and continue clearing out all the adds. I believe the Minotaur is either, yeah, I was going to say he's either on that spawn or the one across the way. Of course, the one across the way. Here I recommend taking out every single ad before you run around and worry about um, the arc nodes, just because you are forced to be on the same um, floor level as the fanatics, which was not the case in the previous two floors, but fanatics blowing up on top of you or standing in the fanatic goo piles while you're getting hit by Hydra is definitely gonna kill you pretty quickly. So yeah. So for here, I like to start right here in between the two on the left. I just go ahead and hit that, hit that, hit that, and then hit that one. And then you can't actually see the last one through there, I don't believe. So I'd have to run over and get it. And then this little floorboard opens up over on the right side. And then of course you're off to the boss encounter. Um, and then of course, take your time with this jump. Make sure you line it up nice and tidy, pop and hop and then you're in very good shape now for dps my favorite thing to use here is once again the wither horde um i love to go the retraced path again because i like being on that double special because i can force more heavy ammo drops when i get kills with my special weapons and when i get kills with my abilities and melees and stuff like that so that i always have a ton of heavy for dps phase and the reason i always want to have a ton of heavy for dps phase is because my number one recommendation for dps is a rocket launcher specifically an auto loading one so that you can rocket swap to the wither horde shoot the wither horde swap back to the rocket etc etc i'm going with lasting impression because it's an extra 25 percent damage per rocket you could do something like explosive light if you're creating a lot of orbs you could do something like vorpal weapon if you don't have an option with lasting impression you could do something with frenzy frenzy would be awesome too um kind of up to you but I want to try to have as many rockets as humanly possible per DPS phase. So that's why I love rocking the double special. Because it's going to have me end up with a lot more rocket drops than if I had uh, a primary weapon. Because it doesn't force nearly as many heavy drops. Now, of course, we're going to want to go into here and switch our linear fusion, ro uh, sorry, linear fusion mods to rocket mods. So that we have uh, increased even higher chances of getting rocket ammo. Um... If this setup doesn't really sound your style, um, a really, really safe setup is something with Leviathan's Breath, maybe a Breach Loader so you can still proc weak and clear in Leviathan's Breath. Leviathan's Breath will stun lock the boss, so the boss can literally never shoot at you. It's the safest possible option. However, it's significantly lower in DPS compared to something like this. So it's kind of a, 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 uh, up to you a little bit. Do you want to run more DPS phases with a safer DPS loadout, Leviathan's Breath might be better for you. Um, if you want to go some, if you know, if you're a little more confident in surviving during DPS phase, um, Rocket is going to be one of the best options in conjunction with being the easiest to execute. There are better DPS options like this, like Wither Horde in a linear um, with bait and switch, like for the Harpy is better dps than the rocket i'm pretty sure but it's way harder to hit that crit um when the boss is running at you and shooting at you with a rocket you don't even have to worry about uh hitting a crit so um i think this loadout has a very nice synergy between ease of use and really really strong damage sleeper simulant can work really well too um i've heard good things about air apparent believe it or not um but of course whatever you please so just gonna start it up I like to run right over here on left side and just get ready to instantly nail this Hydra. So I have one Hydra off the map. And then most of my ad killing is going to come from Wither Horde. Now, this room is basically invincibility town before you open this main door because, of course, the boss cannot get back here. So, like I said previously, Solo Flawless Dungeons are all about patience, they're all about discipline, and they're all about just staying safe. So never feel like you have to rush anything. You can come back and hang out in this room 
at any time. You like if you have to go to the bathroom, you can go back and hang out in that room. Obviously, go to the far back of it because you don't want a supplicant to run up on you. Um, but you know, safety is paramount. Don't feel like you have to stay in here and be rushed. Um, you know, to to be killing all the enemies. Um, you can you can totally play it at whatever pace you deem best. So got the attrition buff. Go ahead and hop in here. And then I want to get away from these supplicants and away from the wyvern, so I'm going to come over here. Of course, that middle door is open now, so he will be able to chase me. So I got to remember that. But I, of course, can just use my invisibility cooldowns to stay pretty safe um, while I'm getting, you know, while I'm getting all of the, uh, all the nodes. So I know the other node is over here on this side easy one. But I got a lot of supplicants over here. So I'm actually going to try and weaken up a supplicant and get a finisher on it. Actually, can you not finish your supplicants? Because it didn't give me the option to finish it. Finisher it? Finish it. It's not improper grammar. I don't think you can do finishers on supplicants, which is something that I just learned. So, fun fact. Alright, um, I... I'm going to want to get a new Artrician buff. So, I'm going to go ahead and kill this Minotaur. I'm going to try and get a finisher on him, too, so I can get invisibility. Vibrant is not a fan of that. So, yeah, like I said, just taking my time. There's one complete. And of course, this one. I'm waiting for more invisibility cooldowns. So I want to wait for my dodge to come back up. Since it's not back up yet, I can go ahead and stab this guy. Come back over there. Finish him. There's another heavy brick. There's a ton of heavy bricks all over the place. So I'm obviously going to have a ridiculous amount of rocket ammo. And we're good. So then we're going to run back outside. I'm going to kill this Minotaur real quick. Just because I want to make sure I have an Arctrician buff refresh. I don't think I needed it. But of course, hit all five of these. <clears throat> and so I'm actually going to start with a rocket. Because, uh, lasting impression, it's not going to explode for like three seconds. Then my rocket's auto-loaded. I'm using my tether primarily just for DPS. I'm just kind of backing up, trying to avoid the bosses, whatever damage as much as possible. And I'm not going to shoot another rocket because I know its shields are going to come back up soon. And you know, I don't, I don't want to waste a rocket because it does take a little extra time to detonate because of lasting impression. And unfortunately, my wither horde didn't auto load, so I couldn't put it into that hydra. But yeah, I mean, damage isn't impeccable. Um, like I said, there is better options for damage if you would rather run those. Um, but this one is very safe, and it's very, very easy to execute. Um, it's, um, there's, there's certainly, you know, no real aiming that I have to do. It's just make sure I plop the Wither Horde on him, make sure I plop the rocket on him, and that's pretty much it. You saw I was jumping a ton, which allowed me to do a really good job of avoiding the boss's shots, which are extremely scary. Um, that's, you know, staying alive is the key, like I said, and this loadout makes it really, really easy to stay alive. So I'm going to run in here just to get a little safe. And, you know, this supplicant should be finishable um, by standards of red bar enemy finishers, but it's uh, it's not, so I'm I'm going to say that supplicants are completely not finishable, so something to keep in mind. <coughs> um, the other thing I want to mention for a DPS is the Minotaurs will always despawn for DPS phase, but uh, any other enemy that comes into this room will not. So if you have a goblin or a supplicant or something like that in that room for DPS phase, you do have to kill it, um, but the Minotaurs you can completely ignore. So really at this point we're just playing playing our lives trying to get this minotaur killed and i'm actually going to go ahead and hit my dive 
so I refresh my invisibility. That I can go ahead and grab this buff really easily. I don't like that those supplicants are right there, so I'll try and clear them out real quick. That takes care of that. Run back into this room, get my footing again, figure out which ones I have to hit. So I see I've got that one, but the boss is in front of it now. So I'm actually going to rotate around to the other side. I messed up my jump there. That's why I kind of like double backed because I didn't want to accidentally fall into that pit right there. And then this one looks like we're right here, which this one's super easy. I missed one on accident, I think. Oh yeah, I missed this one. And I don't really like the positioning I have right now. So I'm going to be a little more patient. And I'm just going to rotate around here. Get as far away from the boss as humanly possible. Because the boss is really liking his footing over there. Um, and I need a new Artrician buff as well. And same as the previous encounter, like I said... Um, if you need special ammo, make sure that you're, you know, you can shoot some with your Wither Horde and then pull out your heavy weapon and make sure your heavy weapon is out when the enemy dies and boom, you get a special break. There's seven Wither Horde shots for me. Um, all the same as the previous encounter, um, to kind of force whatever type of ammo you need, which is really, really nice. Now, I don't want to mess with these supplicants, so I'm going to go ahead and hit my dive. And then here, gotta hit that one, and then that one is complete. Then I've gotta go wrap up the other one over here, which this route always confuses me. I'm gonna get stomped, but that's not a problem. Now I wanna wait for some invis cooldowns to come back, but they're not gonna come back in time, so I'm gonna weaken up a goblin, get a finisher, get invisibility from the finisher, you know how it goes. And then this should be the final one. Good to go on there. And I only have 10 seconds of Arctrician. I also have to kill this goblin because he's not going to despawn for DPS phase. Let me kill that man for real quick. I'm going to focus these and then I'll kill these two goblins so that they don't bug me during DPS phase. I actually got a special brick while I'm using special ammo. It's not fun. <clears throat> of course, I'm going to rock it first. I'm just kind of going back and forth, left and right, dodging all his shots. It's probably my last rocket right there. I actually wasted a rocket there. Um, that's the one downside of lasting impression, of course. But as you can see, the damage is pretty decent. It's um, probably a uh, any some somewhere from a six to an eight phase, depending on how good my damage is. Which I know doesn't sound good, um, but for solo flawless on this dungeon, that's not bad. Doing something like ten DPS phases is not uncommon so as you can see here i'm still completely maxed out on rockets i've got a brick there i've got a brick there i've just i've ammo all over the place so ammo is quite literally never going to be an issue there is another ammo brick for me as well that's why i absolutely love running double special in this encounter um even though i'm really not doing much with the retrace path i could do the same thing with my um funnel web that i'm doing with the retrace path but just the sheer fact that I have double special on means that I have increased heavy ammo drops, which means I am always 100% full on rockets, which means my DPS phase is always going to be very consistent in damage, which I feel like is an incredible boon to have when you're doing something like a solo flawless dungeon. So um, I know that double special is probably going to, you know, shy some people away from following this guide and using this build because... I don't really like using double special either. It feels weird to me. It feels weird not having my like infinite ammo primary weapon, but um, I'm telling you that's absolutely amazing. 
I have pretty much shown you every single thing that there is to know about the boss encounter, so I don't really feel a need to show the rest of the run. If you want to see more action of this, you can come to my live stream at twitch.tv slash if you feel like this is not enough uh, footage for you. Um, but if you feel like you still need more knowledge on this encounter, you can just rewatch what we've already gone over because I've pretty much given you every single tip that there is to know about the solo flawless dungeon. So I, I hope this guide was helpful to you. Um, it's obviously a bit of a longer guide, but I feel like it's much more comprehensive because, you know, you, you get to see literally every single thing that is involved with solo flawless in this dungeon. You get to see every single contingency plan. You get to see every single situation. You get to see how to deal with the first DPS phase and, you know, subsequently maybe what do you do in the third DPS phase? How do you get more ammo? We showed, you know, we kind of talked about how to get create more special ammo in the first boss fight by having your heavy weapon or heavy weapon out to promote special drops. Boom, there's one right there. Um, but even though my Wither Horde got the kill, my heavy was out. So it prioritizes dropping special. So I hope that you not only learned a lot about this solo flawless dungeon, but solo flawless dungeons in general from this video because they all follow kind of the same formula. Play, sm uh, play slow, uh, play smart, play safe. And, you know, you'll be solo flawless in Dungeons in no time. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, and as always, have a great day.